out with an illness. Wake hopes to have him back on the sideline this Saturday against North Carolina. A heck of a spot for Coach Savage to break the curse of 14 straight losses at on the road against the Georgia Tech squad. Dallas Walton has given Wake some productive minutes tonight. He's got eight. First half summary, Wake has been almost perfect inside the arc. The turnovers have been an issue, but Georgia Tech hasn't really made them pay. And GG Berea knocks down the jumper. They say he's as confident as they come. Really believes himself. If you're not going to check him from 15 feet, he's going to make you give him some attention. He's got four tonight. That is a career high. Walton. And a jump ball. Possession arrow, Georgia Tech. I like Walton's aggression. And, and look, Gigi Barrett got beat. His length was able to block that shot in the 11th hour. But Walton, who's a guy who averages below eight points per game, understands this is an established front line from Georgia Tech, and he's trying to exploit the vulnerability. I like it. Lead more, hard stop. Saba. Out of bounds. Off the Georgian. Again, the country, Georgia. And Gigi Berea limping it down court. It's not good. They're going to need his length. They're going to need his size. Now remember Rodney Howard tonight coming back after missing five games with an ankle injury. Tech had gone to the small lineup the last two games. It worked in a win against BC. They were overpowered down low by Armando Baycott in North Carolina. DeVoe driving on LaRavia, gets separation. And a little kiss off the window. 15 for Michael DeVoe. And going his weak side, he's a strong left hand, dominant body. You see a scoring, the savviness of the scoring ability. Body and create space to get a clean look. LaRavia. Walton keeps it alive. Williamson secures it. And another jump ball. Possession arrow, Georgia Tech. Take a look at that loose ball. You can tell it's conference play. Everybody trying to get involved. Great possessions. Because it feels like it could come down to one in this back and forth ball game. We've watched a lot of ACC games this year. About half of them have come down to one or two possessions. Williamson, no. Gigi Berea to the bench, getting some treatment. Rodney Howard in there to man the post for Georgia Tech. Nice feed. Coleman missed the bunny. And I don't know if that was basket interference by, La by LaRavia to alter that ball not going in. Crafty move by the ACC's leading scorer, Alondis Williams. Jordan, when you're Georgia Tech and the opponent really doesn't have to respect your bigs offensively, what does that do to your offense? Well, it makes it that you take away the head of the snake because they can throw doubles, they can pack it in against DeVoe, they can throw extra bodies and see if DeVoe can pass over that. He had to try to thread the needle just to get that down low to his big. Interesting to me, Jordan Usher coming off the bench. Clearly, Coach Pastner was not happy with the effort in the first half. It's where he wanted to sit him, bring him in this game, see if he'll be more aggressive and right out of the gates he attacks and that's surprising his mo is energy it's being a high motor player and that's where he's at his best attacking and if he's not attacking then he's not keyed in defensively they don't have the personnel anish jordan's got to come out there and play at his best every time he steps on the floor devoe understands that assignment that's why he's one of the leading scorers in a conference, and Usher has been a really good performer. He can't take nights off. It's a big reason this team, after a 5-1 and one start, has lost 8 out of 10. 
one and five in the ACC. To win, they need Usher and DeVoe to bring it every night. And of late, they haven't had that from both. Here's a turnover. Numbers for the Yellow Jackets. Sturdivant blocked at the rim. Usher able to clean it up. LaRavia got a piece. And we get another held ball. It'll stay with Tech. Whole lot of contact. The officials are making it clear they're going to let him play, so you adjust and raise your own level of physicality. I mean, I, it, Howard had body there. I think Alonis may have got it clean. Either way, body's flying. Offensive rebound, Khalid Moore. No basket, a whistle away from the ball. It's on LaRavia, his second. Ten offensive rebounds for the Yellow Jackets. It's a defunct offense. There's going to be some balls that careen off. Coming what seemed like from the perimeter, Khalid Moore with some size, able to corral one there and earn an opportunity. Moore is senior out of Archbishop Malloy High School. That's where Georgia Tech great Kenny Anderson went. Has that seven-foot wingspan and... His versatility on the floor defensively is what makes him so valuable. LaRavia turns it over. Usher ahead of the pack. And he flushes it. One. A little bit of Rosetta Stone. Translate that defense. DeVoe gets in the lane, gives it to Robin. The one-hand jelly. Here comes Georgia Tech. And he's Shroff, Jordan Cornette, Wake Forest, one of just four ACC teams in Joe Lenardi's projected field. And Jordan, that tells you there are more sand traps in conference play this year than in years past. Yeah, and there's just no clear cut. Okay, these are the teams you got to beat. It's almost like Chase, a Duke win. Uh, that is the, the, the prized win in this conference. But outside of that, as you look at these teams, Miami, I believe, should have a higher seed than that. You could argue North Carolina. I think they'll be a lot better, but they should be at an even worse seed. Uh, Head-scratching Virginia Tech has that, that uh, next four vibe, considering they've only won a, a game or two in conference, two games in conference right now. But Wake Forest... It speaks to Coach Forbes having this group ahead of schedule what's supposed to be a rebuild. It's accelerated with the job he's done this season. Good. Isaiah Musius at Wake has the lead 44-41. That's to your point. You look at Virginia Tech's resume, the Maryland win doesn't look as good now as it once did. Same with the St. Bonaventure win. DeVoe answers. It's huge. It's everything, quite frankly, to this Georgia Tech squad that DeVoe feels confident from beyond the arc. They're going to ride him. And he's opened up here perfect in the second half with five points, two and two from the field. Skip to Musius. Back-to-back -back threes for Isaiah Musius. He's got 14 to lead the Deeks. You see him. He's a confident shooter, shooting 38% from beyond the arc. These are catch and shoot where he excels. Usher catch and shoot. And it rolls in. Both teams trading threes tied at 47. Usher clearly got the memo. Got out transition, had the dunk, got to the free throw line, didn't convert. Bangs down the three. He is more engaged. Looks like coach lit a fire underneath. Sent him the memo with the TPS report and the cover sheet. <laughs> Williamson. And the rebound there by Usher. Charging down court. Beats LaRavia and Georgia Tech with its first lead since the 15-25 mark of the first half. And we're now back, back to even. That is on Jordan Usher. Grandstanding, talking to his bench, not locked in on his defender. And LaRavia is not going to wait for anybody. And they trade twos. Enough with the grandstanding. Usher needs to get back and guard. We get it. You're upset. Keep playing at the high level you have in the second half. Stay focused. 
Sturdivant knocks it down over Walton. If you're awake, Jordan, do you have to caution here about making this a three-point shootout? Yeah, Wake's got to get better and more locked in defensively. They have moments in that first half. They got to continue to put it together and lock in here. Air ball. Look, he was out in the first half. He's clearly upset. These are his confessions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jordan Usher, ladies and gentlemen. Our star watch was Alondis Williams and Michael DeVoe. DeVoe, 18 points to lead all scores. Williams, really a pretty complete floor game, nine points, five helpers. And the thing about it is, Alondis Williams, of course, is the playmaker. He is the straw that stirs the drink. But there's a few other double-figure scorers and guys that are confident having to take over. For Georgia Tech, Michael DeVoe has to give him 20 every night. He has to be that guy. He's almost hit his average for the season, but they're going to need more from him here tonight. Luckily, Jordan Usher has come alive after being benched to start the second half. He's come out with an energy and a jolt, no doubt. Now, DeVoe was due after just scoring two points last time out against North Carolina. And he only took five shots in that game. Kicks to the corner. Sturt events. Down low to Moore. The turnaround contested. And the rebound taken by Williams. One thing Alondis Williams has done tonight, he's taken care of the ball. Only two turnovers after 15 in the last two games. The double. C, way off at time. And C's capable of shooting that. It just wasn't in rhythm. It was catch. Do I pass? Do I dribble? Ah, heck, I'm going to shoot it. That's not confident. You're not stepping into one. So it becomes a bad look. Seven of Usher's nine in the second half. He gives it away. Williams dumps it back. The three is good. Who else? Star. Monsanto, he's going to be a player for Wake. This is an X Factor who they didn't think would contribute this season back from an Achilles injury. His season debut tonight, former SOCOM freshman of the year at ETSU. But that's your star, Alondis Williams, who could have drove it one on one in transition, but said, Not my field, my guy who can step into one for three. An unselfishness about him that makes him fun to play with. DeVoe forced that one. And here comes Williams again. Driving on more. Earl. And a timeout by Josh Pastner. We'll take one too. Alondis Williams putting his stamp on this Wednesday night tilt in ATL. road win for Wake at Virginia where they rallied in the second half. Another sign of growth for a program. They've already doubled their conference win total from last year. They have more than doubled their overall win total from last year. In fact, they've more than tripled it. This is a program that for the better part of the last decade, really since Jeff Bezdelic took over after Dino Gaudio was let go, they have languished in the gulags of the ACC. But boy, you have to feel bullish about what Steve Forbes has done. Picked 13th in the league this year. Right now, they are a bona fide NCAA tournament team. And Anish, how, how I judge guys that step into new roles and take over programs is how quickly can they find an identity? And Coach Forbes has been able to find that rather quick with this group, and that's why the rebuild's been accelerated. They're efficient offensively. They're skilled guys. You can tell the skill development within the program is real because the ball skill and ability of the level they're good with it they need to be better with it they're good defensively they need to be better there but you can tell this group is trending in a direction that's dangerous foul on the shot and a reminder no steve forbes in the building tonight wake's head coach out with an illness the school did not provide any further details brooks savage you see him there he is the acting head coach of forbes assistant they hope to have forbes back for Saturday's home game against North Carolina.
Thibaut Coleman off the side of the rim. And Laravia. Georgia Tech has done a horrendous job getting back in transition in the second half. Nine fast break points they've given up. That is pure effort, and it's unacceptable right now from the Yellow Jackets. And we've seen a few of them come off bad shots. A foul on the floor against Wake. I mean, you see a shot go up for Coleman on the right side. There's got to be a safety valve. Somebody's got to hustle back and protect the goal. Here, DeVoe. That's three defenders. And that's the attention he commands when he puts that ball on the deck. He's the head of the snake. First on Hadim C. Devo saw the uh, Devo saw the matchup. 6-10 C just couldn't stay with him. GG Berea forced it. Another bad shot. Here comes Witt. And he gives it up. Maxwell the other way. Rims out. Saba puts it back. I know what you're I thinking, it. dunk it, big fella. <laughs> I hated Gigi Maria's shot attempt the possession to go. I love how he made it right by hustling down the floor, a rim run. He doesn't get the basketball. He earns it with the putback. How about that ball Win. movement? And he just has not found the shooting stroke this season. Struggling there. Coleman, the freshman. Monsanto got a piece. And that's the growth of a young group. You got the dribble drive, you think you have an advantage, defense collapses on you, but you're still heck bent on, I'm gonna get something up. You gotta compose, kick out, run some more offense, find a good one. It went off the head of Maxwell. Sorry, Jordan. Uh, Monsanto, we thought he was going to play two, three minutes tonight. That's what we were told. Ten minutes, six points, six rebounds. What a mi this is the equivalent of a midseason trade in baseball. <laughs> yeah. And one for Dallas Walton, who's in double digits. Late on rotations. A tick too late. Wake Forest makes you pay. These guys know how to move the basketball. That's, you look, Khalid Moore has got to get down there quicker. Got to be one step quicker to get into the Fed. Or it looked like that was actually My, uh, Miles Keller. Got to get down there quicker. Free throw good by Walton. 63% down the season. Six point lead. Nine and a half to play. And he was open for a reason. The offensive rebound and the putback. Maxwell will go to the line. Just to punish Wake Forest in terms of second chance opportunity. They are crashing because they know guys are missing. Not a great shot from Gigi Berea. But how about to, to get in there, come from the perimeter, and Maxwell only standing at six foot two, rebounded amongst the trees. We remind you, Saturday on the ACC Network, a triple header. Marion Sebron, who is sandwiched between Williams and DeVoe in scoring in the ACC, leading the Wolfpack against Virginia. Then we see Armando Baycott, UNC, will take on this Wake Forest team. And I urge you to watch the studio coverage as well, because Jordan Cornett will be in studio as an analyst. He's getting his flu shot and his booster on Friday. And like a good soldier, going to work on Saturday, I'm curious to see your body language I, on set Saturday. Am I going to work on Saturday? I think we're going to find out. And I know I have to because my Bengals are playing Saturday too. So there's no way I get out of work. I'll be there with a smile on my face and I'll fight through it. <laughs> Big fellow is going to play hurt. <laughs> Smith to DeVoe. Try to play have. wingman, had the open three. Those are the ones, and it's asking a lot of DeVoe to be perfect. But he's got to make those shots. Rondis Williams. And then DeVoe at the other end. 20 for the senior from Orlando. 
Williams the answer. Okay. Transition defense continues to plague Georgia Tech. Continues to. You get the feeling this end game may come down to the two stars, both in the top three in scoring. Seven rebounds for Monsanto and his first action of the season. And there's no such thing as a bad shot for DeVoe, so you can't be angry at your star for taking it. He has to. Turnover by Alondis Williams, his third. He's got 13 tonight to go along with seven assists and five rebounds. He leads the ACC in assists as well. Adim C, the well-traveled sixth-year senior, fourth stop for him. Virginia Tech, Junior College, Ole Miss, Wake Forest. Great back cut. Maxwell hesitated and traveled. UCS did a pretty good job of getting beat, but recovering in time to generate confusion from Maxwell in a costly turnover. Wake Forest looks to build when we come back. How about this, Alondis Williams. I told you he flourishes in the open floor, the high flying dunk, making good decisions in the open floor as a willing passer. He's got the three in his back. This might be his favorite, my favorite play of him. Speaks his unselfishness, has the dunk, kicks it back for three, and more high flying acrobatics. What a talent, what a discovery from Coach Forbes. What an impact number 31 has had for Wake Forest. Look at the line tonight, he's done it all. He's gone for 29 times this season, never did it in his time with Oklahoma. William C., Williamson, Musius, and Moravia on the floor for Wake. And we'll get foul, it's against Smith. I don't know how Davon Smith gets that assignment at 6-1. Going against a 6'5 grad student, a grad transfer in Alondis Williams. You get education real quick as a sophomore undersized right there. He's got one heck of a challenge here in front of him. Only the second team foul on Georgia Tech. Gotta find a way to get Williams the basketball here. Get out of the way, let him post. Got a nearly five inch advantage. We're gonna take a triple. It's Williamson from the outside. He's got eight, his second to three. Eight point lead matches Wake's largest of the game, and Usher. We'll get to the free throw line. As limited the personnel as Coach Passner has, you can still see that he's maxing out with what he has. And that's Jordan Usher. He's very talented going to the free throw line. But aside from that, there is perpetual movement that puts a defense to be locked in and disciplined that mitigates the loss you have in personnel. That speaks to coach. Usher's left money on the table at the free throw line this evening. As a team, Georgia Tech 5 of 11. Usher 0 for 4. Williams to Laravia. Top two scores for Wake teaming up. I don't know how you get that wide open and everything falling apart for Georgia Tech currently. Laravia is tied up by DeVoe. Hard to see, but it looked like Jordan Usher may have been caught ball watching and just simply back cut. Absolutely what happened. Not in position, help side, not disciplined. Eyes caught staring at the ball, Laravia. 
does what all good players taught to do back up make yourself a target a receiver and get two and then again the next sequence georgia tech failure to take care of the basketball even worse job getting back in transition that needs to be a primary focus when they look at film going back and reviewing this one the lack of effort to get back and protect your goal has not been there largest lead of the game for wake deacons on a 7-0 run Moravia transferred to Wake after Indiana State made a coaching change on Missouri Valley with the Sycamores. Top five in the ACC in field goal percentage. In fact, Wake has three of the top ten in the league in that department. Big minutes tonight for Saba Gigi Berea. Wake Forest doing a good job of staying with guys, not being back cut, moving, communicating, active, turn them. Miles Kelly stepped on the line. And a part of that, Jordan, you look at who's on the floor, right? Kelly, a freshman. Debo Coleman certainly has had his moments, only six points per game. Everyone knows DeVoe's your score. You need somebody else to step up. And that's the inability to find one. Jordan Usher has been touch and go this evening. So you haven't had a lot of faith in him, although he's had moments here in the second half. They don't have a guy outside of right now, DeVoe, who can go get it and make something happen. And Wake Forest clearly has that guy. Yeah, it's Alondis Williams right now. Third foul on Khalid Moore. Brooks Savage acting head coach tonight. Steve Forbes out with an illness. Largest lead for Wake. It's up to 13. 10 on end. Nearly a travel. And Saba's got eight now with career high. If they're going to make a push, it has to happen now. And again, that initial thrust. I mean, Wake Forest can score in the first three seconds of these possessions. There is no defensive resistance. Georgia Tech looks flat at the absolute worst time in the game. Now, one of the things Brooks Savage told us was against Virginia, they got seven points in early offense as DeVoe misfires. And Wake won that game by eight points. That's a big part of what Wake likes to do when they have the ball. Got a touch. Got one touch. He's good. Made himself on camera. Got the ISO. That's when you flash the mask down really quick to say, hey, mama, I'm in here. Then you put it back up and be safe. Let me ask you, if that was you, how tempted would you be to shoot? I'm getting one off. I'm getting one off. And I'm not pulling the Carmelo, remember, when he was retired in the guard, faked it. I'm taking a shot. Chris Thomas took them all when I played at Notre Dame. A traveling call on Smith. YOLO. 22 to 7 run. I mean, this was a Georgia Tech team that surged in front, had a basket lead. How about the response from the Deeks here on the road to place where they haven't won in the city of Atlanta going against Georgia Tech in the last 14 tries? Coach Forbes at home. Coach Savage steps up in the elevated position for the night. And you've seen a response from the Deeks here in the second half. They took a jab, they threw a haymaker. Really, this is two road games in a row. They did that to Virginia as well. They got down seven and then went on a 13-0 run in that second half. And another team they've had no success recently against. Exorcising some demons here. Coleman no good. It went through. 
Gigi Berea, LaRavia there to pick it up. Wake Forest looking to run again. Wide open, Williamson, the three! The lead, Mushrooms, to 16. Too much talent, too many playmakers, too many shot makers. Demon Deacons are real, and they're fantastic. Anisha, it's simple. You want to win in conference play, you got to have max effort against a Wake Forest team that's really good. Transition defense against a Wake Forest squad that can get up and down, paramount. And look at the effort. Who's picking up the basketball? Who's committing to the dribble? dribbler? Who's protecting the goal? Body language. Guys aren't in defensive position. They've lost the battle. They're committing when the ball's in the painted area. I mean, this one, it doesn't get any worse. Standing, watching, hoping. Hey, guys, prayers don't get answered in conference play. Effort wins games. It has been very, very bad for Georgia Tech here in this stretch. A 15-2 run by Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons have made five straight field goals. Georgia Tech looking for an answer. On the flip side, that, 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 that board you just saw of all those scores speaks to the skill set of this Wake Forest group. They'll be in every game this year. If they don't win them all, they'll be tight because Wake has skilled players that make proper decisions. They need to do that consistently. But guys who can make shots and play off each other very well. This group is at a schedule. Coach Savage, have yourself a cold one. Relax and enjoy because your performance today, stepping in for Coach Forbes with three and a half left in some game, has been pretty darn impressive. Three fouls on Laravia sends devoted line. And Jordan, to add on to that, now the one area where Wake would have liked more production this season is from its bench. Now you enter Damari Monsanto. Now he showed what he can do tonight. 12 minutes, 6 points, 8 rebounds, and was not gun-shy at all. We know how potent <laughs> Wake is inside the arc. He gives them enough weapon to spread defenses out. Yeah, absolutely. And he's also a willing rebounder because he's got that size on him. Uh, look, he's a Coach Forbes guy. He's fearless, he's a competitor, and he's never scared. And, and again, just... Williams. Whatever you want at the goal. There, there's nobody home. It's now a smallish lineup, and there is no resistance for Wake to get everything inside the arc. Usher got Moravia in the air and patiently puts it in. Williams, the lob for Moravia, knocked away by DeVoe. This is where DeVoe's going to take over. Yeah, I was telling us you got to live with some of those with Alondis Williams. Yeah, but I don't blame it. I mean, there's been no resistance. Look at this. I mean, this is, it's incredible. How much Wake is getting in transition. It's inexplicable. You've got a small lineup in the game. At the very least, get back. 24 fast break points for Wake tonight. 13 for Georgia wow. Tech. Credit Wake for sticking with it. There's a commitment. Makes, misses, turnovers. Get it and go. Beat them down the floor. 44 points in the paint as well for Wake. Usher. Able to draw the foul. I'm sure a slow first half tonight, only two points. Ten in the second half, but again, another developmental masterpiece by Josh Pastner. He was a ball of potential energy when he transferred in from USC. They have found a way for him to harness that energy, make it go kinetic. He worked with assistant coach Anthony Watkins on footwork in the offseason. And again, tonight was not one of his best games, but he has been a very steady number two guy this year for Georgia Tech. 
Yeah, and that speaks to the ability. Look, skill development is a foundation to Coach Pastor's success there. Uh, coming up through the grassroots of AAU, Tim earning his, his gig with Arizona on down the ranks, ending up here at Georgia Tech, passing through Memphis too and having success. He's a guy that gets the most out of his guys because he works at it on the days that aren't game days. He makes guys better, and it's tough for this Georgia Tech group, at least the primary nucleus of talent. They had all that success winning an ACC championship a year ago to going through losing your heart and soul and Jose Alvarado and the player of the year, Moses Wright. They're taking their lumps right now. I'm sure that's part of the frustration with a guy like Jordan Usher, but Jordan Usher needs to understand he's so important. He's so talented. From the tip of the ball, he must be aggressive. It's the cross that him and Michael DeVoe have to bear with this group that's trying to figure it out coming off of that incredible year a season ago. Three-second violation, 12-point game, 208 to go, and Georgia Tech with a couple of stops and a couple of threes could make this a little interesting. DeVoe has it knocked away. Loose ball. Wrestled away by Wake and you see us say jump ball possession arrow to Wake Just active hands from you see us After the active hands goes a step further to dive on a floor six eight. That's a long way down You'd love to see it I like this Wake Forest team I really do, and Anish, we end up talking about in every broadcast how we forecast what the ACC looks like. Despite how UNC looked in their last one, I still think they're dangerous. We know Duke is dangerous. Watch out, Conference Florida State's coming on because it's what Coach Hamilton does. I think Virginia Tech has some special in them coming up, but Wake Forest is a team that has my attention. They're an upper-class ACC team without question. Did I mention Miami? Have I mentioned Miami? You did not, and you should after what they did to North Carolina last <laughs> night. If, the, if they are not a nationally ranked team, I need to talk to everybody involved in the voting process. It'd be absurd. The big three of Moore, McGusty, and Wong has been special, and then Wardenberg stepped up last night. I know Josh, past fan, he said this team is final four good after North Carolina blew out Georgia Tech over the weekend, but... Where you temper your expectations on UNC a little bit, they've been blown out a lot, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, and, and and they came out without a commitment to establish Armando Baycott out of the gate where they were hoisting threes against a, a inferior front line defensively that lacked the physicality to really stand up to Armando. And once they made that decision to get away from him, confidence built on the interior play from Miami and Sam Wardberg. The big for Miami had a career day. Challenged Baycott to come outside, exploited that mismatch, and we know the capability of those perimeter players for Miami. That is a dangerous team that is not just a flash in the pan. They have staying power. Musius, 16 for him. And Georgia Tech gives it back, and it's pretty much surrender Cobra. Look, you can look at the record of Georgia Tech, seven and nine, one and five in conference, and think, oh, Wake's supposed to win this game. If you take a look at the experts out west, they had this as a very tight one possession outcome. This is a, a Wake Forest team that can lean on this and say, this is a culture win. It's a culture that we're building win. We don't have our guy, the staple of our program, the face of the Coach Forbes here. Hopefully he's getting healthy so he can return quickly. Insert Coach Savage, who's right there with him in practice, in film, with these guys, and there's no let-up. To go on the road and win in a place you haven't done it in 14 tries speaks to what they're building there. It starts from the top with Coach Forbes, but clearly he's delegated to his guys. We're seamlessly a Brooke Savage, who's one of the up-and-coming coaches, steps in here and gets this dub. Pat on the back for that guy. Know him well. He's going places. Right, he told us yesterday... What started Saturday against Virginia on the road where Wake rallied back, that was a sign of growth and maturation for this program. He said, we showed an edge, really praised the internal leadership. And then when we asked him specifically about Alondis Williams, there is an infectious energy from 31. He plays unselfish. So does LaRavia. They can score. 
they get everyone else involved and when wake is clicking there is a connectivity to this club no question coleman's three back irons williams a rebound and he flirted with a triple double tonight 19 points nine assists seven rebounds he'll dribble out the clock wake goes to five and three in conference play and they exercise some demons in atl jordan they absolutely did give coach brooks savage the game ball in this one a heck of a second half performance they took a punch they responded with a knockout blow georgia tech still trying to find themselves but credit wake for a heck of a second half performance first win for wake forest at mccamish pavilion they snap a 14-game road losing streak to Georgia Tech. 15-4 on the season, 5-3 in the ACC.